Hi everyone, this is Sherry Rice Smith with EFTforChristians.com. This is part two of that little bitty um, trauma uh, video that I want to make because I want to go on here about uh, implicit memories um, and try to pull this together for those of you who are really interested in all of this, um, the biological way that this all, the physiological way this all works. So back to implicit memory. Implicit memory is the unconscious part of a memory. It's the suppressed or repressed part. It's the stuff we stuff down and we don't want to remember. Um, it's all the sensory motor um, recall, I guess. I don't know what else to call it, but it's the details, the aspects of what we remember, but we don't really remember it. We remember it with our body because it's cellular memory and it gets that's where it gets put because it tends to be too overwhelming for us to even think about. Um, we can we can re repress explicit memories, those ones I talked about in the first video, um, where there is, you know, kind of some kind of conscious memory, but that's a different process, and you can shove that down too because, again, you just don't want to remember it. Um, Dr. Fred Gallo was a, a, a physician. He's been at this energy medicine stuff for probably closer to 40 years than 30 now. And he feels that the implicit memory is probably the most important part. There's also um, the implicit memory is part of, it's kind of some of, there's there's some, that's why you call it sensory motor. Some of it's sensory, the rest is a motor part. Um, this is the thing where once you learn to ride a bike, you can be 50 years later, get on a bike, and you remember how to do it. Your body, it's imprinted, it's, you know, it's a known entity, it's been done so repetitive that, you know, we say things are as easy as riding a bike because that's what we remember. Those times when you drive home um, late at night, I used to do this when I worked third shift and I'd get home 30 minutes later and I'm like, how the heck did I get here? I don't even remember driving. Well, it's because those those implicit memories, those they just take over and it just gets you where you want to go. It's, I don't know, it's instinctual, I guess. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, there's no words needed for it. You just do it because you know it's there. Um, sometimes what makes a memory explicit where you can talk about it versus implicit where you you truly bury it has may have a lot to do with how much support you receive and especially your near children how much support do you receive after the trauma if if you know a parent dies or someone dies in the home um, if there's someone else to take over an aunt a grandma they come and comfort you where perhaps the ones that are real close to you, they're in their own grief and they can't help. That makes a huge difference. You know, if there's a fire or a tornado or a flood, um, you as a child, someone just does something for you to make you still feel connected to the human race and like that they really care. And it, it kind of ameliorates that hopeless, helpless feeling. And I often think that's what makes things, you know, one versus the other. Um, in implicit memory, uh, we talk, you're, when you're talking and tapping, you put that, imp, uh, that implicit, and we also call implicit memory procedural. That's the part where you can ride a bike and you know do it 50 years later and you still know. So that implicit or procedural memory is into words. Uh, as you t tap, you start pulling out pieces of the memory, the, the sensory part, and you start tapping about it. And often, it's that implicit memory that sends us over the edge. We hear a noise or someone says just the right specific words and we just act out. We take off. We react to whatever it is. And then pretty soon we find ourselves screaming at someone and we're like, what? You know, five minutes later, we were apologetic. We don't know why we just did what we did. That's the implicit memory. Something just literally triggered you based on some memory that you shoved down inside. Um, so when we tap and talk, we pull those memories out and we do what we call memory reconsolidation. And we change them just a little. We put a different spin on them and often positive. And a lot of times that only goes around with round two. We forgive ourselves. We realize that the memory had nothing really to do with us. And that, you know, maybe mom and dad's divorce wasn't about us. It was about them. Or something we did, we say, we realized that maybe we were four years old and it wasn't our fault. What did we know? We were four. So we change how we see or think about that memory. And that's 
that's where EFT then uh, does its quote magic because you change the memory and it unsticks you from that behavior that you dislike. Um, we also in that process tell our amygdala that it wasn't our fault. We didn't know any better. You know, it was this or it was that whatever, you know, the, st the story, how the story changes as we view it with our adult mind, because our adult mind has a completely different perspective on a, on a memory than our four or five or six year old mind would. Uh, so that's where part of it is. Um, it's, it's, it triggers us because it reminds us of something from the past. And a lot of times there's no words for this because it affects the broca area of our brain. A broca area is our speech, our speech part where we can put things into words and that just gets blown offline. And, you know, we have no words for some of these traumas. We have no idea. Um, we, this is when we react out of character. We don't understand why we do what we do. Um, we have no context of time or place that's available to us to us to even make sense of what went on. Um, this is the emotional memories that we replay over and over. We repeat. They just, they dog us. They run our life forever and into, uh, well into adulthood. I mean, here I am. I'm still doing this stuff. I'm over 60 years old. So if, as we tap, we, we're able to call out what's important, what isn't, reevaluate it, tell our amygdala we're safe, and, you know, let this stuff finally go let Jesus have it it just doesn't need to be there um, often the implicit memories are bound up into fight and flight they're also bound up in our empathetic um, reactions I mean sometimes some of us are just so overly empathetic I mean we just feel so awful when we see a bug squished and and so it's it's just it's all bound up in all this and in, in sensory memory much of it buried underneath uh, often our, our, what middle memories we may have, we may only have, and we may pull out tiny little pieces here that are explicit, but they're tied up in the implicit memory, but they're all fragmented. They're all perceptions and they're fragmented. And for, for practitioners, fragmented or whole, uh, we just work with whatever it is that the client hands us and we start somewhere it could be just a body sensation or it's just a tiny tiny little piece and I have some memories that there's just a teeny tiny piece and it, it takes a bit of work but you can you can do it um childhood traumas are the ones that really cause big uh, plastic you know neuroplasticity plastic changes in the brain and what's happening there is it's shrinking the hippocampus now the hippocampus is that is a small seahorse shaped um part of your brain that switches your memories from short term to long term and so those long term memories often never ever ever uh, form and a lot of it's tied up in and let me see if I can say this glucocorticoids the glucocorticoids are the um, they're the they're the type of cortisone or cortisol that the regulates the metabolism. This is the one that raises and lower, raises your blood sugar when you're stressed. It also screws up your digestive enzymes. It also messes with some of the mitocardial, the heart and some uh, central nervous system uh, things. But, it's, but glucocorticoids are all about carbohydrate uh, metabolism. And that's what kills the hippocampus cells so that these synaptic connections, these neuro memories never form. Um, and then, of course, our glucose stays raised. You know, then we end up with insulin resistance because our insulin is being poured out, trying to deal with this high blood sugar. And then uh, it, pre it predisposes us to any all those diseases that are, and those are all stress-related diseases. So what do you get? Diabetes. Obesity is huge. Um, and I'm all well aware of that one. Um, you know, heart disease and it rot liver and it rots out everything. Um, depressed adults with trauma have 18% smaller hippocampi than a depressed adults without trauma. So it's pretty big. I know they think, um, they talked about children with PTSD have, um, and there's like, I think, I don't know, 15, 20% of kids have PTSD. So it's, as I always say, it's not just for shoulders anymore. And they have a 25% uh, smaller hippocampus. So, and then, you know, research shows that once those gluco uh, corticoids are, are uh, you know, put into place that it, you know, we're sensitized to that well into adulthood. Um, if it's brief stress, 
the hippocampus recovers, you know, it, re it resumes its amount of volume so that you can remember the memories. If it's long term, sometimes it doesn't. Um, it, it, the hippocampus really goes offline a lot with depression. So, uh, and it, but it's interesting. It's one of the few, it may be only one of two. There's a couple of, um, or in the, I don't want to say organisms. Uh, what do I want to say? Whatever. The hippocampus will regrow for, because it grows from its own stem cells, which I think is really interesting. Okay, so back to trauma. Trauma shocks us into a pattern. It stuns our mind. It surprises us because the whole thing comes out of the blue. It's something we never, never expected. It gets lodged in our cells. It's part of the cellular memory. I mean, it really literally is stuck in your cells. It's also stuck in your nervous system. And it goes in as sensory. It goes in as emotional state. And in order to heal, it's got to come out in the same way. And that's where tapping is amazing because often we're feeling as we're tapping, you know. So that's why it's, it does work. Um, so because the brain is, is plastic, we can change those memories. And then we look at it from an adult perspective. We realize we're safe and that the event really, 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 really is in the past. And we can just leave it there after we neutralize it. We give it back to Jesus because it's no longer relevant in our life. So you really do need to tap this heavy duty stuff with a practitioner. Someone who can walk the path with you, kind of hold your hand and guide you through it. Because... We often, you just get off track when you're doing it. Suddenly you're tapping about one thing and your brain's off to something else and then you never truly resolve what you originally went in to do. Um, you can start with any part of the memory available, or any body sensations. And you need to really cover it, the, the memory as thoroughly as you can uh, because even the smallest, teeniest little details are the most important, especially if it's an ex explicit memory that you actually remember parts of. And I've had clients who remember every single detail of this horrible event. I mean, they can come right down to tell you how many cracks are in the sidewalk and you need to tap every single piece that they hand you so that you neutralize it thoroughly because if you do it correctly, you're going to ch help change. I mean, it's just amazing what you can change in their life. So we change those and then we can move on. So once again, another day, another time, I'll do some generational traumas because we do carry those for three or four generations after something tragic has happened, uh, you know, to our great grandparents or grandparents, and that has to be covered too. And that's all in our RNA and our DNA. That's right on our genes. So that we'll talk about that. All right, guys, have a great day. Um, remember, uh, email EFT for Christians at gmail.com EFT for Christians.com. Uh, let me answer whatever you have come to class, read some books, buy a book or two. And um, let's go out and heal the world for Jesus. All right, take care. Bye-bye.